Birgit uh, Vinter Hansen and Soren Holrun Mollera. Uh, apologies for my American tongue. Uh, we'll be presenting on um, environmental control uh, and using AI. So over to you. Thank you. Just share my screen here. Sorry. Is it okay? Looks good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Birgit and I am a conservator and work with uh, preventive conservation at the Danish Royal Library. Uh, and uh, uh, together with uh, Ulla Bøvad Kaiser, I uh, went to, uh, we went to Fantastic Future in Oslo and uh, came to talk with two data scientists, uh, Christian Boskov and Søren uh, Mollerup, who will be, be presenting here with me. And uh, that was the start of us working together on two projects. Uh, the first was on, um, on using machine learning to pre predict the, the stability of uh, paper in our collections. And the second one is the one we are about to end. It's about uh, investigating, investigating if we could use uh, machine learning uh, based models to uh, predict uh, adverse indoor climate uh, events. And, and in that way, um, be able to proactively control the environment before we have uh, a risk to our collection. So, um, Here's an example of climate data in our exhibition uh, room. And uh, in general, most organic materials uh, are safe within uh, 40 to 60% uh, to, uh, relative humidity. If it gets too dry, it may crack, or um, yeah, if it's too humid, it may coggle, or uh, ink may bleed. And if too dry, uh, you may have cracks or deformations. Here it's uh, binding in parchment. Um, our case study uh, is on, uh, it's, in a, it's a building from the National Museum. We also had a, a, a conservator uh, who used to work at the National Museum in uh, Copenhagen and now at the Royal Danish Academy. Um, we had this uh, storage facility in Erholm outside Copenhagen, where we had um, climate data for 12 years uh, collected. And also we were able to, um, to uh, get climate data from the Danish Meteorological uh, Institute. So we had outdoor and indoor climate for 12 years with a resolution of one hour. Uh, and we wanted to uh, investigate if we could predict uh, with machine learning when the humidity would exceed 60% or get below 40%. Um, yeah, and here's some uh, circles around uh, incidents in the uh, historical data. Uh, we set up a um, uh, API to harvest then data from the nearby meteorological weather station and from the building management sensors. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, to, to be able to send data to uh, a machine learning algorithm, uh, which they build at DBC where Søren uh, works and he will uh, take over from here. Um, yes, so... Uh... <clears throat> We tried to to make a model to predict these uh, extreme weather events. Um, so so that's the, the main problem. Uh, trying to uh, predict uh, if an extreme uh, humidity event is happening within the next uh, twenty four hours. Um, so this is an um, example of the data we have. Um, we have uh, some outdoor data and some indoor data, and uh, it, it consists of uh, temperature and uh, humidity measurements. And as you can see, there's, uh, I think we have uh, hourly uh, um, measure points and, and, so, and sometimes uh, uh, every half an hour. Um, if you would change the, the slide, David. The first thing we, we did was just to, uh, to load in the data and, and visualize it in different ways uh, to see if we we could see with the naked eye what was going on, if there was some sort of triggering 
event. Um, there wasn't anything. There was no smoking gun we could see here in, in the in the data. And I mean, if, if we found one, I think that that Birgit and and and, uh, and her people would have has seen it as well. So um, so we didn't see anything. So uh, we we uh, tried to to make a model to to see if we can um, predict it that way. Um, so if you change the slide again, Birgit. Um, when we look at the data, we have uh, 12 years of continuous climate data, which is um, very good and um, for, 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 for training a model. We, we normally, we don't have thousands and thousands of measurements. So this was a uh, uh, very nice uh, thing about this problem. Um, there were no, really not a lot of uh, missing data. So we didn't have to do a lot of uh, um, imputation of missing data. Um, so, and th this uh, this kind of problem is uh, is a, a time series uh, pro problem. So, so if you uh, want to Google it, that that's that's the thing you should look uh, look for. Um, it's uh, th there's a lot of a uh, uh, lot of ways to, to do this kind of uh, analysis. If you go to the next slide again, here, here. Um, yeah. So so. Um, we started loading the data, and then we uh, uh, tried to, to uh, calculate some, uh, some uh, derived features or auxiliary features from uh, the data we had. There's some uh, domain-specific things we, we didn't know. Uh, I think it's the same as we were computer science scientists as well, so we, we don't know a lot about uh, the area. So we had to learn about uh, absolute humidity uh, and relative humidity. Uh, we didn't. We don't know a lot about it now, but we know how to uh, to calculate it from from the data we have. We also uh, um, added some uh, some derived features like uh, max and mean and average uh, uh, from the data we had. And then we we uh, we defined some um, 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 some uh, target values that we would uh, like to predict. So. Uh, if an uh, event, uh, if there was too high humidity in the next uh, 24 hours, we, we set a flag and, and the same for too low humidity. So that, that was the, the, um, the targets we wanted to predict. And we, we created two models, um, one for each of these cases. So we had some pretty simple uh, binary uh, classifications. So uh, we split the, the, the data uh, into a train and a test set. So we we trained on the trend set and, and uh, didn't look. And then afterwards, we evaluated on, on the, the test set. So we didn't uh, um, test on the thing that we actually saw during training. So uh, we started with a pretty simple model, a random forest classifier, uh, which is um, yeah re really simple, but it, it has the advantage that it's uh, pretty easy to understand what, why it works and how it works and what columns it, it looked at. Uh, after after that, we we tried uh, 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 another model, XG cheap boost uh, model, uh, and we did get some improvement in, re in the results, but uh, um, which were expected actually. But but uh, um, the thing is, we, we can really uh, it's it's harder to uh, to see uh, uh, how how it got better. We, it, the analysis analysis is a bit harder on that one. Um, if you go to the next uh, slide here, this is uh, the results from the prediction of the high humidity. Uh, and, and it actually performed pretty good, we think. Uh, when the model predicts too high humidity, it's correct in 92% in, uh, of the times. And when the humidity is too high, the model predicted this in 92% in, uh, of the time. So this is the precision recall measurements. And uh, we had almost the same uh, numbers for the low humidity, which is on the next page. Um, yeah, so it was uh, uh, 94 and, and 93. Um, so we were pretty happy with that. Uh, if you go to the next slide, period. So um, instead of just uh, creating a model, we, we wanted to, uh, uh, to create an actual working uh, 
a working pipeline so 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 we could use this so uh, we updated the the climate data indoor uh, data every day and uh, uh, built a new prediction and if we saw an, an extreme humidity event we uh, we may have uh, in this case, it says facility manager, but but it was just the the people at KB, I think, uh, and the, uh, so so we could see if it actually worked in in the real world. Um, but but this is actually the the target we wanted to do, to make something that actually helped in 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 a real world scenario. Um, and if you go to the next slide, and here we can see the actual uh, some some. Uh, some predictions from the, the working system. So it predicted uh, um, four events from uh, November to May from the last half year. Two of, two of the events were, were correct. There, there was an extreme uh, um, humidity event and, and two times it were, were a false alarm, but, but the value is uh, very close to, to 60, which, which is the, the high value. It actually just touches uh, uh, 60, so it was uh, almost correct. Uh, and that's some of the things. You, you, we could uh, make it um, more sensitive, but we would probably get uh, some more false alarms. So that's, um, depending on the use case, may maybe that's a good thing or not. So, um, but, but we're, we are pretty happy with the, the result fr from, uh, from this. Um, from for the last half year. This is just a summation of uh, the results from the, the different uh, models. Uh, there's nothing too exciting here, but you can see there's a GitHub uh, URL at the bottom. So if you want to see uh, the, the data and the predictions and how we did it, you can you can find it uh, all there. And then we have, do you have another slide? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not 100% uh, correct, so the, we need to have a human in the loop for, for these kinds of things. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, things uh, we could do. And uh, um, we thought about uh, using uh, uh, the weather forecasts in, instead of the, 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 the data, um, uh, the measured data, uh, that, that would be a thing. And maybe the other data sources that we can use like uh, uh, and measure from filters or how much uh, electricity is used in the facility and other stuff like that. Um, so that's uh, um, some of the avenues that we want to look at and, and also try to use the same model for, for other installations uh, like this. Uh, yes. And one, one interesting uh, thing was uh, that it turned out that the, the weather outside the storage uh, facility did not uh, add, uh, add data from the weather outside did not add to the precision and recall because probably because uh, the building is so uh, insulated and and tight so uh, we thought it interesting to to try to look into less regulated uh, spaces like exhibition rooms uh, and uh, churches Yeah, I think that's what we have got. All right. Well, thank you very much. As uh, two fascinating studies on actual libraries, archives, and museums issues with, with AI. Can't get more lamey than this. This is excellent. Um, any, any questions? I might, I might yeah, ask. I... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Was it Daniel? Yeah, I am. No, I was just curious whether, um, you know, you had anything to say on how people interacting with this model, like whether doing this process increased their confidence in this kind of uh, machine learning approach, or if you had anything to say on that. Um, and no, not, not yet, actually, but that's... Um... That's an interesting question because the, the, the main focus is actually to make a, a system that people want to use and can get some value out of. So, um, uh, and a lot of the, the, the talk around this was, do, do, we, do we actually uh, create something of value for, uh, 
um, for the installation. And, and uh, yeah, I, I don't have an answer for that, but, but that, that should be the focus. Yeah, it's just curious whether people would be more annoyed if it misses something or, uh, yeah, warns them too often. And I guess that's uh, an interesting one to try and work out. I think you could, you should, you could not rely uh, totally on it. Um, yeah, you would also because it is uh, heritage. You would not, uh, you would not like to make a wrong, uh, uh, yeah, to overlook an incident or something like that. So, so that's a risk. Also, we had in this um, uh, case study, we had the problems with uh, uh, some software getting an update which then not spoke to to the other system so there, there are plenty of risk of failure in uh, in relying on this yeah that, there's um, um there's a sensitivity question about how, how uh, is it is it better to uh, to be correct all the time and 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 uh, uh, maybe miss some, some events or, or should we be a bit more sensitive and then uh, 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 risk some, some false positives? That's, that's sort of, and that, I think that's a case by case basis, basis what's, uh, what the problem at, at the facility is. Um, yeah. Thank you. There's, there's one more question and uh, posted by Stephen Meyer in chat. Stephen, would you like to read yours out loud? Sure. Um, so I was wondering if you will need to adjust the model um, based on interventions, like if, if going forward, if you're feeding that data back into the process, but if, if something was predicted to say raise the humidity, the facility manager then did something to circumvent that, but then all of a sudden, isn't that going to affect sort of future predictions, I guess, is the question. Um, yes, yes, it is. Um, because you, yeah, you would see a decline or, or, or in the signal uh, very quickly if, if something happens. So uh, um, there would be sort of a feed, feed, feedback effect. If, if it happened often, you could probably um, at at the the interaction as a as a new signal and and try to uh, to use that in the model as well